So Beach Walk is in Massachusetts, we're amazed when they found a washed up jelly-like ooze that apparently was alive. And Hazen found some jellyfish at the aquarium that got him thinking too. What is this really? People call it an animal, but really it's just a slimy mass. Can we really call this thing an animal? For that matter, what really defines an animal? Come on, let's get geared up and dive headlong into this question. So some animals look nothing like a normal animal, especially the ones we're about to see today. Some animals, like these corals, look more like a mixture between animal, plant and rock. These corals may feel hard as a rock, yet they're definitely alive. And even though they're colorful and branch out like small trees, they're not plants either. They're actually a colony of small animals that are members of the phylum Cnidaria. On closer inspection, you see tiny tentacles emerging from the coral, fishing the water for plankton. Those are individual polyps connected by living tissue they secrete a calcium carbonate structure to make the corals hard skeleton. Would you believe there are over 400 species of hard corals here in the Pacific? Pretty cool, huh? Even though corals are made up of thousands of tiny little organisms that don't resemble most animals we know, they're extremely important in the reef ecosystem. In fact, they made the reef ecosystem. So how do we actually define what makes an animal an animal. What's an animal look like? Animal. Four legs. Four legs. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Furry. It has legs. Ears. It's nose. Got ears. Tails. It's probably about a foot, foot and a half long. It's got a bunch of little legs. It lives underwater. Well, with the big claws and just, you know, rawr. It's got a head. It's got a mouth that eats, eats fish. <laughs> Thorax. It's got its fins. It's got a tail. An abdomen. Mm -hmm. Furry, striped, gorgeous. Two eyes. Eyeballs was kind of small, always open, always alert, looking around. Got mandibles, um, which are basically teeth. The fur is kind of orange and the stripes are black. The trunk. The trunk and the, and the tails. Okay. Oh. It's got a trunk, it's got a tail. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Big ears. And uh, a good memory. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess that could be an animal. Uh, Suze? Of this project is to collect a sample of every single coral colony on the reef. The way that we do that is we go out on the reef box off a part of the reef that we're going to sample. So every single coral colony that we're interested in needs to be uh, photographed, it needs to be measured for its location, and then it also needs to be sampled. Tiny sample, just like not even the size of a fingernail. And that's what we're going to use for the genetic analysis. We usually think of animals as something that moves around, maybe has like, you know, like humans has two eyes, a nose, two ears. Corals don't have that, but they have other things that are important for uh, categorizing what is an animal and what isn't. So one of those things is that uh, it's a heterotroph, which means that it needs to acquire its nutrients from other organisms. So it's not like a plant which can just make its own food by photosynthesizing using the sun's energy. It actually has to eat its cells 
don't have cell walls. That's another important distinction between animals and things like plants and fungi. Uh, of course, it's also a eukaryote. Unlike bacteria, eukaryotes have cell organelles and a cell nucleus and a, a nuclear membrane that separates the DNA from the rest of the cytoplasm. Another reason why corals are animals are that they're actually multicellular. Uh, other things that you might find in the water, like protus and things in whatever, in water samples that you might collect, those things, even though they move around in the water, are single-celled organisms, and so those by definition are not animals. When corals are babies, they're basically planktonic larvae, these tiny uh, microscopic particles floating in the water that can swim. Once it finds a habitat to settle on, then it's there for life. So, and then its entire adult stage of life, it's just this sedentary animal that um, secretes a calcium skeleton that makes it hard and look like a rock. But otherwise, you know, locomotion isn't necessarily a, a, a thing that's essential to defining what an animal is. You've discovered that many things in nature we simply take for granted, when in reality, natural systems are pretty complex. And we've learned that even defining what makes an animal an animal isn't as easy or obvious as we first thought. Taking what we know from the sea so far, can you think of any animals that we don't commonly consider to be animals? Like, take the natural sponges that you use in the shower. Yep, there's a ton left to be discovered with Untamed Science, and until we've covered everything, never stop exploring your world.